the Joe Rogan experience. You know, oftentimes in, in the UFC, you'll see guys, when they go up in weight, they become their best version. Like Charlo, Charles Oliveira is a great example of that. Like he fought for 145 mm -hmm. at a while, for a while rather, and he fought very well, but never really hit the strides right. that he hit when he went up to uh, 155. He's on a roll now. Oh my God, he's so good. He's on a roll. He's so good. And he's, he, uh, you know, people take different approaches. They talk smack, get fights. You know, there's a whole different ways to do it. He's so respectful. So respectful. And so nice. Yes. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, whatever, I guess it's different for everybody, but man, he's got something that's working right now and it, he's hard not to root for. Yeah, well, that's who he is. He's a very, very nice guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got screwed in his last fight. They, there was uh, some shenanigans with the scale. Uh, some people had messed with the scale. Here's a problem with these digital scales. Um, foreign fighters, uh, they use kilograms. Mm -hmm. And in America, obviously, we use pounds. Right. And so the foreign fighters were, like, these scales are calibrated. And then the foreign fighters would reset the scale. So oh. they could switch it back to kilograms. So it fucks up the, the whole calibration. Oh, I see. And so... He would weigh in, or he weighed in, like, the night before the weigh-ins. He was like, oh, I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning, he goes and shows up for the weight cut, and it's a pound plus off. And that is directly related to this calibration thing. Calibration issue, yeah. So makes sense. So now they have a, the UFC has a new policy because of this, where mm -hmm. they have a guard who watches over the scale 24 mm -hmm. hours a day. Like, they have shifts where yeah. no one can fuck with the scale. Like, they, if you're going to get on that scale to try yourself, they're going to watch you like a hawk, and you don't press any buttons. You don't just get on. What's your yeah. weight? Get off. That's right. it. So these guys were monkeying around with the scale. and That's surprising that it, even at the level that UFC's at right now, it's that was still still hadn't got that figured out. It's Phoenix. Yeah. That's what it is. Oh, it's, I and see. it's not, not, not a knock on Phoenix. I love Phoenix. It's just that the people that are there don't do high level world championship yeah. MMA fights on a regular basis. They do a few, mm -hmm. you know, they, we've had a good, good time there. Yeah. They've had some good events there, but uh, they just made a mistake. They, they'll let these guys do it. And there should have been someone watching the scale. And the, the scale was off, and that's a fact, and that's why Oliveira... Look, it's not the best excuse, because Justin Gaethje made weight. Yeah. Uh, everybody else made weight, except mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the the women that fought earlier in the night, she didn't make weight. But that's it. But how... So, I actually, I wanted Gaethje in that fight. I'm a, I'm a Justin Gaethje fan. I love all his team. I like his attitude. I like he's a, just a... a he's awesome. So tough. Um, but how impressive is it that Oliveira can have that all, all that drama, which you know how you got to be in the right mindset to fight, yeah. I imagine. And he's got to overcome all this and still, then he gets rocked. Yeah. Gets rocked twice by Gaethje, who's got, you know, hands of stone mm -hmm. and still comes back and wins. Well, here's what's interesting about Charles Oliveira. When Charles Oliveira fights, even though he's the champion, he fights like like a berserker he fights he puts himself in danger like he doesn't fight safe he doesn't fight to try to outpoint you he doesn't fight tactically like where he's trying to get you know the the least amount of damage and you know and, and drag you into deep water and then and then strategically try to take you out yeah. the fourth and fifth round no from the moment the first bell rings he's coming at you engaging guns yeah. blazing yeah. and yeah. Gaethje was coming at him too but it's like Gaethje was overwhelmed by Oliveira's pace and his aggression. It's mm -hmm. why, and even when Gaethje cracked him, Oliveira's so different than anybody else. When he gets hit, he just lays on his back. Yeah. And he's like, come get some of this. And nobody wants that he guard game. He gets a break. So he's he, got the he, most submissions in the history of the sport. He recovers. Yes, so he, because nobody wants to go to the ground right, with him. Normally, guys would just come bombing in, yeah. just trying to land anything extra. It's like yeah. when you wound an animal, any other arrow in it is right. go. You're just right. trying to glance something off, catch something. Most time, guys will hurt a guy, come in, and just go crazy, but not, not with him. him. No, you don't want that ground game. Yeah. His ground game is so elite. It's so good. I mean, I wonder how he would do in a like world-class Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament, because mm -hmm. I think he would do very well, because I watch the way he finishes submissions, the way he syncs things up. I mean, it is top of the food chain stuff. I've seen a lot of jujitsu in my days. I have rarely seen anyone compete in MMA that closes the show like Oliveira when the fight goes to the ground. It His was smooth. shit is razor sharp. Smooth. Razor sharp.